Hi everybody, I'm Rebecca Keppel. I'm here for Queen & Co. today, and I have two new cards to share with you made with the Bug Jar Kit. If you're not familiar with this brand new kit, I'm going to link to a video here where I show you the kit contents and create two shaker cards with it. I wanted to find an out-of-the-box way to use the kit, and I love creating little pattern backgrounds using small stamps. I'll actually link to a video here that I've done that before, so I thought I would try that on this kit and I would do it with heat embossing. So I'm gonna take that small butterfly stamp and I'm gonna heat emboss it all over the card background, which is Craft Cardstock from Gina K. I'm using LDRS Creative Watermark Ink to stamp my butterflies repeatedly on the Craft Cardstock. Now this ink stays wet for a long time, so you don't have to worry about it drying before you put on the embossing powder. You can do what I did and just create the entire panel stamped first and then pour the embossing powder on top. It stays sticky for a long time. So next I'm going to pour some gold embossing powder all over those butterflies and that's going to create our metallic embossed pattern background which I really really love. It takes that creating a pattern background with a small stamp just up a notch even more. I'm gonna set the craft panel aside and I'm gonna work on my second card. I'm going to use the lightning bug or firefly stamp from the set. I'm first going to treat my black cardstock with anti-static powder tool and then I'm gonna stamp the little lightning bug in a pattern all across the black cardstock. I'm using the same LDRS Creative Watermark ink so it'll stay wet the entire time. And you can see that I am able to see the pattern as I'm stamping it even though it is clear on black cardstock. You can see that it's darker. So next I'm going to pour some silver metallic embossing powder on this one. I thought the silver on black would be really pretty whereas I love the gold on the craft. So just for something different, I'm going to make sure that all of my little lightning bugs are covered and then turn it around and tap it off. You can see there were still a few stray bits of embossing powder there, so I'm just using a dry paintbrush to get those loose and then I'll re-tap to make sure they all come off before I heat emboss it. Otherwise, I will have silver smears on my card panel. I'm going to make sure my heat tool is nice and hot and then I'm going to heat set both these card panels at once. That is why I like to do all the stamping so I can do all the heat setting at the same time when my heat tool is nice and hot. Now I have my Tonic Studios Easy Clean Mat on my work surface and I'm going to smear some Distress Oxide ink and spray it with just a little bit of water. Pick it up as if it were a paint and fill in the open areas of the butterfly and you can see how beautiful that Distress Oxide ink looks even on top of the craft cardstock, which is the beauty of using Distress Oxide ink here. Of course you could use paint especially acrylic paint would be great to fill in, but I love getting more mileage out of my Distress Oxide inks, and I really love the colors that are available in the Distress Oxide ink. Plus, it's just a really easy way to fill in those heat embossed backgrounds because the heat embossing acts as a resist, so basically you're just picking up color and dropping it into the open spaces, and it fills to meet those stamped lines. I'm going to do the same exact process with the fireflies. I've used Twisted Citron on the wings and I'm going to use Squeezed Lemonade on the bodies. And you can see that I do add several layers of this to really cover up that black cardstock. Okay, now to put the rest of the cards together, I want to stamp and heat emboss in gold for the craft card stock, the little mason jar topper and the strings. So I'm gonna use the watermark ink and then the same gold embossing powder, but this time I'm gonna do it on pattern paper. I'm gonna temporarily adhere the dies that come with the kit and cut out those two pieces. I'm gonna use the love jar mason jar to cut out a little mason jar of pattern paper as well. I'm gonna put my sentiment in the middle of that little mason jar topper there. It just says butterfly wishes. This I am gonna use white embossing powder just so it stands out a little bit more and then heat set that as well. I'm gonna adhere the string to the mason jar topper with some Memory Runner XL. Pop out the middle of the mason jar foam shape 
pull off the backing and adhere it to that card panel there. I'm trying not to cover up too many of those butterflies because I think I'm gonna put pattern paper on the inside, but then I realized I like seeing the little butterflies flying around, so I decided not to put pattern paper inside. I'm gonna pour my little butterflies in the middle of that mason jar foam shape, and I should not have pulled off the topping yet. I just, I don't know why I did that, and so that's why they're sticking a little bit. That was my fault. I should have waited until I poured the toppings in before I pulled the top protective layer off, revealing the adhesive on the foam because it is double-sided foam adhesive. So I'm using several of the toppings that come in the kit just so that there are a couple of different colored butterflies. Next, I lay down the acetate that's included in the kit. I am gonna use the little pattern paper frame of the mason jar. I like that orange to match with that pink so it goes with the butterflies in the background. And now I'm gonna adhere the topper as well. So that completes my little shaker there. And next I am going to adhere this panel, which I cut down a little bit onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock, and then onto a note card of the same size. Okay, for the second card, I've decided to stamp the sentiment right in the middle of the mason jar to have it be inside the shaker. So I've stamped it in some VersaFine Black Onyx ink, and I'm going to heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. This will keep it from smearing at all because I am putting it on a silver cardstock. To put this card together, I'm going to pull off the backing of the foam and lay it down on the card panel. This time I am going to put the inside of the jar because it's got that little sentiment there. So I'm just going to use some tape runner to adhere that. I made the same mistake for some reason. I don't know why I kept doing that. I peeled off the top protective layer before I put the toppings inside. It's a lot easier if you put the toppings in and then peel off the top protective layer and then lay down your acetate. I'm going to use the tape runner to adhere a piece of cardstock on top and then I have the same tape runner to adhere the string to the mason jar topper. I just needed to straighten that out a bit so I moved it which you can do with this tape runner at first and once you press it down it's there to stay. So now you can see I have my sentiment inside the middle of the shaker. I'm going to lay this panel down on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of coordinating cardstock from Gina K Designs, and then on top of a top folding note card of the same size using that same tape runner from Thermoweb. I also decided to add some Tonic Studios Nouveau Glow Drops. These actually glow in the dark, so I thought it would be pretty cool on the black cardstock. And the green color really brings out the other greens in the toppings and in the cardstock as well. So I'm just gonna place a few dots around the splatters and fireflies that I created on my card panel. And that completes my second shaker card. So that's just another way to use the bug jar kit from Queen & Co to create your own background. I think it's a really playful look. You get to create some different color combinations in the back depending on what you want to use. If you're interested in the supplies that I use today, they will all be linked down below. If you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can do that here. You can check out my blog for more information, and I'll have a couple of other videos linked here if you're interested. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Have a wonderful day.